We would like to welcome you to our new show. Broadcasting live from North Nashville. The title of the show is To Thyself, Be True. The show will be hosted by Cloanter Kelly. She will be talking on an array of topics. This show can be an inner healing journey for the body, mind, and soul. She will deal with childhood traumas, generational dysfunctions, normalized dysfunctions, daddy issues, insecurities, teen pregnancy, divorce, depression, insomnia, negative thinking, procrastination, and whatever else God places on her heart to discuss. Now welcome our host, Quanter Kelly. Hey y'all, hey, happy Tuesday. Welcome to Tugaz. Uh, Don't start. <laughs> oh, shoot. Okay. Hey y'all, hey, happy Tuesday. Welcome to To Thyself Be True. I'm your host, Kill Monte Kelly, and today we're gonna be discussing inner healing and my personal journey on inner healing. Like I do all things, I want to start this off with prayer. I don't start anything without putting God first, so we're going to start it off with prayer if you don't mind. God, we come before you, Lord, give you thanks, give you glory, give you honor, give you praise, God, for you alone are worthy, God. God, we let all nerves sit down, God. Let all anxiety sit down, God. Let me be a vessel for you, God, and you, you stand up within me, God. God, we call all these things done in your son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. So I think I want to start first with how I began my inner healing, my personal journey on inner healing. And it started with me asking myself, who am I? I wanted to know who I was. Asking God, who am I? What's my purpose? Why am I here? And as I started to ask those questions, God started to reveal different things in me as far as my history. And it goes all the way back to my actual bloodline, to my generation, my generational dysfunction, different things, my, my upbringing. So I had to go back and I had to peel back the onions and deal with different things that was um, dealing with me. So I'm gonna start off with, I think I knew when I was had an actual issue, and we're gonna be real and transparent here on the show. You know, there's no way to actually heal or to do better or to become better unless you're being transparent and to expose what it is that you're dealing with. There's no shame here. There's no judgment. This is just real, true content. So, going back to my story as to when I discovered my, um, going on my inner healing, on my journey. And y'all have to bear with me. I'm new at this, but we're going to get through this thing together. So, here we go. So, I was on my healing journey asking God who I was. Wanted to know you know what was my purpose I think I was about maybe late 30s right at 40 maybe I can remember being at work and um, I was working in the healthcare field during that time and I can remember just feeling overwhelmed um, even though I was I was there at work I was a mother no problems good employee no problems good friend no problems I was what they would call, I guess they would say people pleasing. In every other aspect, I was good. But when all, when all everything was done, after I left and after I'm done with being a mother and after I'm done with being a friend and employee, I felt myself overwhelmed with different things that I was dealing with on within. And I found myself needing to, where things wouldn't really agitate me, I was agitated by it. I just felt like there was something that was taken on the inside telling me that something is not right, you know? not being able to sleep, different things that were going on, just easily, just feeling like you wanted to cry over a little bit of nothing. Just a lot of emotions, just all, and that comes from just sweeping things under the rug. So I decided one day I was just done. I, I ain't wanna deal with no children. I ain't wanna deal with no man. I ain't wanna deal with my job. I said, when I get off work, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to Gatlinburg. And I, I planned it just that same day. Decided to go to Gatlinburg. He said, I'm going to Gatlinburg, booked my trip, went left, went home, packed my bags, and, and drove by myself alone to Gatlinburg. And that's not something that I normally would, would do. I wasn't to the place to where I would travel alone. Now I'm where I am in my journey, I don't have an issue with that. But initially, on my on the beginning of my journey, I was not okay with traveling alone or even going to the movies alone or doing things alone. And in that, I found that that was codependency issue. But we'll talk about that on another show. But we gonna keep going on with the story. So I, I went on and I, I went to Gatlinburg, Tennessee. 
kids was fine, everything was good, left work, went, and I just went and I had some time alone with just me, myself, and with God. And on that mountain, I, I had a room where I was just right in on the mountain. I was able to, I, I, I challenged myself. I challenged myself to, to get out and, and I didn't come here just to sit in a room. So I challenged myself to get out of the room, to go and walk about and go and sit at a bar by yourself and go and eat and do something by your, do things alone by yourself. Cause for so long I had to think about, I was never really by myself. I became a mother at a young, at a young age. I've had teenage pregnancy which is another topic that we're gonna discuss. So I was a mother at a very young age, so I never really had that a long time of seeing what it really felt like to be alone. And I and I just I felt the need to always have somebody with me. You know, it, it, when I wasn't, I grew up, I was the oldest of three, so I had my siblings, and then I had my babies young, and then I got married, and I got divorced, and then, so I've all, there's always been somebody, excuse me, somebody there. But at this point, I needed to have that one-on-one -on -one time. And your body will let you know when you need to have that one-on-one -on -one time. And either you're going to sit down or you're going to take time out to say, God, what is it that I need to be doing? Or he'll find a way to sit you down. So I, I sat down. I didn't want him to have to sit me down. I had already discovered that and been through that too. So I didn't want to do that again. I went ahead, was there, went to um, a bar called the Dix. I don't know if I can I say the name of it. Okay, so yeah, like I said, I'm new at this. I want to make sure that I'm dying all the eyes and crossing all the teeth. But I went to the, this bar and I had some crab legs, which was my favorite at the time. And, and I sat there and I talked to this guy and ended up talking to him and then met another person. And, and for a noise, it was about seven people that were sitting there talking. And I networked, I met different people, and I was able to be confident in who I was as a person and to be able to have dialogue with somebody outside of. The people that I knew, my children, my co-workers, or you know, my friends, to be able to be comfortable in dialogue with a, a complete stranger. On my way back from, I stayed that whole weekend. On my way back, coming back, I um, was headed home. On my way back, on the drive back, long drive. It was rainy. Um, where I was real nervous, driving through the mountains, not knowing anything about where I'm, where I was going, and. Um, I was riding and God was just dealing with me, dealing with me about different things and dealing with me about my daddy issues, dealing with me about things that I thought that I was okay with, that I was fine, but he was letting me know that there is an, there is an issue and you need to see somebody. So that on, on my way back is when I decided that I needed to see a therapist and that's when I went to see a therapist. And I know that a lot of times we talk bad about therapy and we're taught in our homes that we keep our business within and what goes on in this home stays in this home and you know you don't tell anybody about what's going on here and you oh no there are people that are in places and they have their they have gifts and talents and they're there to be able to, to for you to be able to express yourself and talk and talk to it i didn't know how i was going to go about talking or what it was going to be like but i did know that i needed to do something because i didn't see myself getting I was on the, I was spiral, spiraling out of control and um, I didn't want to find myself in a in a deep dark place to where I was you know de just severely depressed even though sometimes people think that in order to, that depression is associated with darkness or quietness or just it can be the happiest person you see that's smiling every day that's greeting you that's cheering everybody up but they could be depressed themselves on the inside you don't, you know, just because somebody is smiling, that don't mean that it's they're really truly whole on the inside. And that's what this whole journey is about, about me becoming whole and sharing this experience with you all. Because I know that I'm not the only one. We're all human. We're all going through this life and on this journey together. And to be able to expose the issues and deal with things that was normally put under the rug or, you know, mask that people don't want to talk about. You want to deal with those issues. And I went to therapy and they my, and my therapy session is where I realized that when she told me I had COVID um, dependency um, issues. I didn't know that. I was an enabler with my, my kids. I didn't know that either. You know, it was just a lot of things that she unpeeled and unfolded. And it wasn't, I just was having a conversation like I'm having with you all right now. 
And she just based on my conversation with her, she was able to pull back those layers. And because when you have a gift and you're operating in your gift, then it's gonna all work out right. She was in her, she was where she needed to be, and where I and I was where I needed to be. And I knew based on our conversation and the conversation that I had with the therapist that that was a therapist for me. Now, just because you go to a therapist, that don't mean that that's necessarily the therapist for you. So you want to pray and seek and ask God. Is this the therapist for me? But just because they are therapists don't mean that they're the right therapist for you. So you want to make sure that you don't just seek therapy, but you seek the right therapy, what you need for you. Some people may want to deal with um, a therapist that's with their particular religion. Some people may want to deal with a therapist that don't have any type of religion background. Whatever it is that you need, you need to find that something that's going to be suitable for you. Because the overall goal is to be whole and to deal with these issues. And it's not gonna be ugly. I mean, it's not gonna be pretty. Sorry, y'all, it's gonna be ugly. It's gonna get It's gonna get ugly. So it may be sometimes on this show, I may be crying. It may be sometimes we may be laughing. But the whole purpose of the point is to tear back everything and to finally truly be whole. Because once, and I know I'm still not there, I got a long way to go. And I, I'm talking back about things that I've experienced. I'm still, life, you're gonna forever be growing always the journey never ends as long as you're here as long as you're alive and you have a purpose and each time as long as you're here and you're fulfilling the purpose that god has you're going to grow you're going to learn and it's going to be a journey so you're going to grow through there's going to be heartache there are going to be pain there's going to be victory it's going to be all type of things but that's life and as you go you learn but when you learn you don't learn it to hold it in to keep it in you learn it to share so that you can help somebody each one each one we can't be too many we've been going on too long keeping our own thing keeping stuff inside holding it not wanting to help think that it's not enough for everybody but our what we're dealing with life is not about us I learned it from a Sunday school teacher years ago. It's not about you. With you, your gifts, your talents, the things that you go through. Sometimes I've been, I've gone through things and I think, Lord, I don't know who's gonna benefit from what I'm going through. But whoever it is, Lord, I, all this I'm going through, I hope they receive it. I hope they receive it and understand and be able to receive what it is that I'm telling them because that's what life is about. It's about us helping each other, helping one another, growing together. You know, crying together, learning together, expanding together, not just staying settled in one place, doing the same thing, continuing over and over in this dysfunction and this cycle over and over and over again. Years go by and you don't realize that you've wasted so much time instead of dealing with your matters and the issues at heart because it's not going to go away. You can't run away from yourself. You can go, you can move somewhere, you can go on trips. I did that too. Thought I could go here and go there. Let me go to the beach. Oh, but your brain and your mind come come with you on that beach. So whatever issues that you're dealing with, you taking it to the beach. Because it goes, it's, it's in your mind. What's going on in between your ears. And that's where a lot of things get, that a lot of things go wrong is in our minds, our thoughts. How are we thinking? Are we thinking negative? What are your thoughts about yourself? What are your thoughts about your life? What are your thoughts, what does, you, what does your life say about you? Look at the people that you're connected to. Look at the, the conversations that you have. Look at the music that you listen to. What kind of shows are you watching? You know, what does your life say about you? And that's what we're going to be dealing with on this show. We're going to be breaking it down. Another thing, too, is that uh, you can't tell them to, to it'll be a link where they can write in while, while you're online and they can talk to you about it. You have a question, just write it in now and I'll print it out and give it to you and uh, so remember to say that too but you're doing good that was good though okay. that is good don't rush yourself okay finish your point mm -hmm. don't allow your your stuff is tumbling out so mm -hmm. fast that I don't think you're finishing the points that you're making mm -hmm. that's just an mm -hmm. observation uh, so I think you got some wonderful things to say mm -hmm. but slow down so mm -hmm. that your people who are listening to you can soak it in and uh, move on. We'll practice it at home. Get to practice it at home. Get in front of the mirror. Yeah, I had to get used to that. 
and then me being able to see myself too don't help. So uh, <laughs> I can always turn it around. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, that would be great. <laughs> well, Sarah, that is that the same right. problem? Uh, you like you like you wanted to be away from. No, well, I occasionally will talk to the camera, but when I've got a guest and our picture is on that screen, oh, okay, then I'm talking to them. Because you're looking over on there. On the screen, so oh, I'm looking right. over there. 